Hi, welcome to Hanchi's World. Hanchi Steve Kaufman here. Tonight we have a very, very unique situation. And I'm going to call it a situation because something like this can only happen by great good fortune. I have with me here in the studio one of the most astonishing women I have ever had the inordinate pleasure to meet. This is one of the most talented people I've ever spoken to. Definitely one of the most beautiful people I've ever spoken to. And as good as it is for her to be here, it's even better for me to have her here, okay? Let me introduce you to the astonishing Lara Jacobs. Hello. Hello. <laughs> We're going to talk about some very, very interesting things because as I said in the introduction, you are without doubt one of the most talented, creative, beautiful people I've ever had the extreme pleasure to meet. Oh, well, thank you so much. You started performing when you were six. Yes. With your dad and your mom. And tell us a little bit about that. We're going to, we're going to, we have plenty of time, so we're going to really have a good time here. I want you to be comfortable and relaxed, and I'm sure you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There oh, you go. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, who, who are you? <laughs> we know what you are, but let's find out who you are. Yeah, well, um, like you said, I grew up in a theater family. Um, uh -huh. I started performing uh, in kindergarten. So I was like five, six years old. Um, I had a little trapeze role. Uh, I was a little bird. Um, and A bird? Yes. <laughs> different kind of birds, and uh -huh. I, I was just one of them flying in the air on a trapeze. Uh -huh. And uh, my father, he had taught me um, trapeze acrobatics because he had went to circus school and he was also a gymnast. Uh -huh. um, so he has been training me. And I also went to gymnastics and ballet uh, starting also at the age of like five, six years. Uh -huh. yeah. So how did, how did this all evolve? I mean, you went to school, you were brought up in Switzerland essentially? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you took it upon yourself to come to New York. Is, yeah. is that how that works? Because all of a sudden, the <laughs> next thing we find out is that you're studying with Alvin Ailey. What was your experience with the Alvin Ailey School? What I really needed was like more like the, the technique itself of um, performing or dancing. The balancing is what drew us together here as a few things. I had uh, received a couple of links to watching you do this incredible feat, okay? So how did the balancing come about? Because I'm sure that's not something somebody said, hey, Lyra, let's figure out how to do this and we'll show you how to do this trick. No, it's intense concentration, it's profound focus, and it's marvelous control. So how did you start to develop that? It's my dad's act. My father, he invented the act. He started uh, about 15 years ago. Yeah. So that's where I came in. Um, he called me. I was in New York at the time. And he said, you know, sir, just call me and, and ask me to join with the act. But, you know, I cannot go. And they would like to buy the license from me and, you know, train somebody else. And you should go to the casting. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, this, this, was, uh, this was a great, great opportunity for you to all of a sudden be in Cirque du Soleil. How did you feel about that when you first appeared over there and I said, okay, Lara, let's well, see what you can do? Well, it wasn't that easy. They didn't just cast me for the act. There were uh -huh. other people, too. And um, I was really nervous the first day I got to Montreal, and I was so nervous. Uh, second day, I felt better, and I was like, listen, I really need to, you know, need to do the second day. And I, I pushed myself, I felt better, and I did the second day. And um, it went well. And, you know, maybe I just knew how my dad 
works, like how he, because I didn't know how to do the act. You know, he never showed me. I was in New York, he was in Switzerland. He just called me, fly to, to Montreal, let's try. Wait a second. <laughs> You're telling me that you did not know how to, you had not really studied it and practiced that act no. until you started just doing it? No, I didn't just start doing it. No, I, I know that. <laughs> I know that. I mean, you didn't just say, okay, hey, watch, boom, 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 boom. You didn't do that. I mean, no. But to be able to, like, put yourself into the mindset that enabled you to Well, that's not how really that. it starts. Yeah, it starts yeah. like, um, it starts by finding a good person. So that's what Cirque was looking for. So they brought a whole bunch of different artists and uh -huh. tried to find out what's a good person how did you uh, start working on it? How long did it actually take you to develop it and get to the point where, like, when those people look at this mm -hmm. picture and they say, well, it's about 40 or 45 pounds, and it's flawlessly balanced. Yeah. How did you begin to develop that? Um, this, see, this is very, very unique, okay? And so there's a certain mindset that you obviously have to be able to put you into that, that you can accomplish such a thing. Right. Tell us a little bit about that, Laura. Well, I had to start... As a matter of fact, tell me about it. Don't <laughs> worry about them. <laughs> okay. I had to start, you know, coaching lessons with my father. You know, after Cirque decided to go with me, mm -hmm. um, I started lifting weights. And um, since I already was a dancer, so I didn't yes. have to take dance training. But I started lifting weights, and, and then I just started practicing, you know, the skill. How long did it take you to uh, get it? I mean, to get it to the point where, okay, hey, boom, I'm going to do this. It's not a problem. I mean, you just do it on a consistent basis. You know, mm -hmm. as an artist, you have yeah. to learn, you know, when you're playing piano, you have to play scales until mm -hmm. you understand. But you're working with something that's very, very unique. Right. How did that open up for you? Well, from the start, I started in December 2010. Yeah. And... Um, the premiere was in April 2012, so like a year and four months. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much every day, just working on this thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tried to practice every day. Okay. And then, you know, like build it up slowly with small performances, small audiences, and just kind of like um, build it up from there. Because it's it's important to do this act in front of an audience. Yes. Because if you're just in a room, <laughs> you don't really get nervous. You get you know, you have to know how to do it in front of an audience. It's so. a performance. Yeah. It's an absolute performance. You also design astonishing headpieces made out of feathers that yeah, I guess you use for Cirque and they make them available as whatnot, but that was not the original intent of it, was it? Um, yes, it was. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you show us a couple of what of you've got? Of course. So, you have here. I call that this is, one. These are really exquisite, I must tell you. <laughs> what do you yeah. call this? This one I call the Balance Goddess design because this the was balance my balance goddess. This was my first design I made, the one I presented to Zurich. I'm like, look, I can do it. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, so this is my first piece I designed uh -huh. and um, I showed it to Zurich and they really loved it and That's the first piece you did? Yes. That's really incredible. That Thank is really you. incredible. Um, yeah, so so now we're in the process of putting them in the store, in uh -huh. our Amaluna store, which is in front of house. When you come in, you yes, have like a little yeah. souvenir shop. I mean, actually, it's a big shop. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's bigger than a breve. How long does it take you to make something like that? Um, you know, I don't really go by hours. I go like by shows. It would take me oh, okay. like, it would probably take me like six shows. So I can make it during six shows while I'm waiting for cues. Aha, uh -huh. so you keep yourself busy yes, while you're on stage, exactly. or, while you're off stage or something like that. I go backstage like and that, yeah. I start like putting stuff yeah, on yeah. it and, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see some others. Okay. This is called, the one you're going to show us now is called the Mohawk. Yes. Am I, I'm, I'm, uh, the reason I know that is because I saw the I'll picture on, on. online, you know? Right. It's fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So this was also inspired by our Amaluna show. We have like one costume in the show that uh, looks like that a little bit. Uh huh. So I was like, yay, let me do one like yeah. that. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. And these are available, I mean, but there's only one of a kind. I mean, you know, you don't mass produce the uh, same model. No, they're all one of a kind right now. Uh -huh. I mean, I could probably make a similar one again, but 
it's not going to be like it's one not to the, one. It's not the same thing, no. right? Yeah. And this one. This one is the peacock goddess. It's the also peacock a, goddess. A, a character in our show. Uh -huh. She's like a white bird type of character. So I, this was inspired by her. Uh huh. Yeah. And you just keep making these things. It's okay. I You've got 15 <laughs> minutes before you have to come on again. So uh, okay, let's yeah. see. I got 15 minutes. Let me create and something. We, which is great because I'm not really in a rush. You right. Know, like I just right. You're make not on them schedule when I have with time. That. Yeah. And yeah. For now, <laughs> we'll see when they're in the store if they, you know, get picked up. I don't know. Maybe I'll be busy. Well, that's good. More busy. That's good. <laughs> so when the store, when the show moves wherever it goes, they would take your creations with them and just you know put them in the store, make them available to people. Yeah, or I just make them backstage and put them in the store ah, once okay. we get there or something. I don't know yet. So we'll see. Okay. How did Amaruna come about? <sighs> I mean, Cirque does different shows. Cirque has 28 different shows. Oh, so all the different shows are going on around the world at different times? Yes, at the same time. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, at the same time. So what is the story about Amaluna? How did that come about? Um, Amaluna is uh, loosely based on The Tempest. So on The Tempest? Mm -hmm, uh -huh. Directed by Diane Paulus. She's a Tony Award winning director. Mm -hmm. Broadway, on Broadway. Um, so uh, Cirque had contacted her um, because Cirque wanted to have a collaboration with someone more from the theater world uh -huh. to have um, more theater elements in the show, like a more heavy set, s you know, storyline. Because Cirque is known for storylines, but they can yes. be misunderstood or maybe not. It's very demanding work, no doubt. Yeah, so, so you know, Diane did a great job in, in directing Amaluna. Uh-huh. And um, we did uh, four months of creation with her That's in with Montreal. constant practice and constant rehearsals, I would imagine. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's the time I started creating that's these pieces. That's when you started. This I is what I was, I was looking so for, that long. connection in there. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we got yeah. there at 9 in the morning. We wait, we wait, we wait for the next queue because not everybody is in the same queue. So sometimes uh -huh. you just stand by. So that's when I started designing. <coughs> and then uh, when it came about um, uh, the proceeds of the designs, I wanted to donate the proceeds to to um, an NGO or a foundation or something. Okay, this is how the Shona project came about? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. So then um, I, I wasn't sure where to donate the money too, and um, I had a very good friend. She's uh, also from Switzerland. She she's from the same town. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Sarah. So me and Sarah decided to start our own project because she was already um, in Goma in Congo at that time. Uh huh. She was doing research for an NGO. Okay. And um, got laid off. And so I was like, happens, right? right yes. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, Sarah, yeah. what's that NGO you work for? I was like, actually, I don't work for them anymore. And I'm like, you know what? We should just try to build our own project there. And she's okay. like, that's a good idea. So she will be like the field manager um, in Congo, in Goma. And I would, you know, be responsible for trying to get the funds to get the project going. Uh huh. So we're doing some research. Do a lot of fundraising, no doubt. You know, <laughs> brainstorming yeah. on what we could do, and we decided to do something with fashion because that's basically how the proceeds were gonna get funded with my fashion pieces. Yeah, right. So we decided to do a project where we would teach women how to sew and design and make money with sewing and designing, and that's why we call the project Shona, because it means sewing in Swahili. Okay, so, so it means sewing in Swahili, Swahili. Yes. Shona. Mm -hmm. I'll have to remember that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. right. So do, you, do these women create other headpieces, or do they work on different kinds of uh, garments? Well, we didn't start yet. First, we got to get the funds. Okay. <coughs> Write a check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, write a check to the Shona project. That would yeah. be very helpful. Do you, do you have a website that uh, shows these things? Um yes, it will actually be out in about a month from now. Uh -huh. And it's called thebalancegoddess.com. How do you feel when you're on stage? 
I mean, every and everybody has what we call, you know, the oh boy, here we go, here we go, <sighs> take a deep breath and we get to work over there. And once you start doing it, I mean, you're completely immersed in your work. But what are your feelings? What are your personal feelings about like when you're getting ready to do a performance? Uh, it depends on the day, just like on the on the individual day. Yes. Okay. So you could be waking up one morning. I know this for, mm -hmm. as a, as a personal thing as well. Sometimes I wake up and I say, okay, this is gonna be fantastic, and then oh my God, what happened? Or I say, oh, I'll never get it going. And as soon as you start doing it, mm. everything starts to open up and it works fantastically. I mean, or not. <laughs> or not, yeah, okay. Do you ever have any, uh, do you, are you critical of yourself? Of course. Very much more so than most people, I would yes. imagine, being critical about you, you know. Yes. But sometimes I'll look at a piece of work that I've done, and I'll say, this, oh my God, this is terrible, you know. And then I'll be, Steve, that was unbelievable. How did you do that? Well, you know, it's just a natural talent, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a thing like that. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to ask you a couple of pointed questions okay. here. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think of being in the limelight all the time? You know what I mean by that? I mean, yeah. Like, Here's Lara, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, do you ever have to like say, all right, today I'm just going to be Lara or <laughs> all right, I've got to be Lara. You know, you've got to like change your persona at certain times. Because I find that it's necessary, depending upon circumstance, where I am, that I can be just laid back and relaxed. And there's other times where I have to be another part of me that's expected mm -hmm. by the public. How do you handle that? Um, well, I think that we are, at Zurich, we have um, not much contact with the audience uh -huh. other than performing. So, you know, we, we get to work, we do our preparations for two hours, warm up, make up hair. It's just a it's a job. It's a job. It's a job. Okay. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't understand that. Okay. They figure, yeah. wow, you have to be in that persona all the time. No. No, you can't. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know that you can't. I find it difficult at times. So you yeah, know, you you change and then you perform, and then after the performance, you take your makeup up, you change again. I mean, you take just, your let makeup me off. Get, <laughs> yeah, let me go get a cold beer or something like that. Yeah, really you know, like. some people do that. Some people go straight to sleep. Some uh -huh. people go out, you know. Uh -huh. Everybody has their own lives. That's right. Just yeah. going to work, finish the job. Yeah. Time to go do what you like to do, you know. Yeah. Are you a spiritual person? I am, yeah. I mean, on a, on a, on a consistent basis or just as a general person you're spiritual I mean you don't yeah. follow any particular no trait not, or philosophy not, or not anything religious. like that no kind of religious mm -hmm. uh, thing not to get no. personal okay, <laughs> you know? it's okay. But you're just a spiritual person you know that yeah. you're a special creation I mean you have to keep yourself separate you have to keep yourself engaged at the same time do you use any kind of methodology to you just keep yourself balanced or do you just like hey this is what's happening this is what's happening just move from one thing to another how do you handle that um, I think like crafting and creating the head pieces is helping me also to keep uh -huh. a balance because it's so different from performing. Performing, I feel like I give so much, like so much energy to the audience and it can be tiring. And I think with um, crafting and designing, it's kind of like more quiet and just for me and just bringing something out that's yeah. very different yeah, from self performing. Self-introspection. Yeah. yeah, so that is one thing. And then I do feel like I do need to learn how to relax and just do nothing. I don't really yeah, know yeah. how to do that. Well, <laughs> no, you're honest. constantly on the go. You know. All the yeah. time. Like, I don't take time to relax. All right, because I'm involved in a number of things myself, and there are times when I say, my yeah. God, how do I handle all of this? And I just do it. I just keep going. Mm -hmm. with, you know, I write. I ride a bike. You know, I think about things. Then I say to myself, geez, if I could, I would change this and make that mm -hmm. happen on a universal level. If you had... Whatever power that you needed to do things, to change things, what would you like to see done in the world? What would you, I mean, besides, you know, getting rid of hunger and poverty, mm. okay, world which peace. is something <laughs> that any, any sensitive person, any sensitive person yeah. of any creative worth or value has that internalized as part of them and says, yeah, I would like to st see kids not have to go to bed cold and hungry, mm. okay. But what would you, if you had <clears throat> unlimited resources, like to do? Um, Besides I mean, being on Hanchi's world, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, what can I tell you? <laughs> okay. um, I, I think I would have to start with with the states. Like I can like talk about the whole world because that would just be a little bit too widespread. Okay, but so let's I bring it in. 
I think, uh, especially here in, in New York, I think awareness just has to be uh, more spread because I feel like there's basic things that we can do in our daily lives to to help these problems that you just said. You, you know, just to sit here and say, "Oh, I wish for world peace." It just yeah, no, uh, that's kind of silly. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's like yeah. really. But you eat meat from like farms that you know hold their animals in terrible yeah. ways, and you mm -hmm. you don't cut the AC off ever, you drive a car. That's, that's right. You know, like, that's okay, right. you cannot just wish for things and not do anything about that's it right. yourself. So I just feel like the awareness um, in daily life should be um, more advertised. And I think, like, in Switzerland, I realized that we already learn in a very early age to, to be more aware of our planet, to, you know, just... And aware of yourself as well. Yeah, and just have, <laughs> like, simple simple things in, in your daily routine that that it's more green you know like yeah. you can not use plastic bags you can bring your own bag to the store you can you know shut the AC off at night you can you can do numerous of things that are just not that hard to handle who's the most important person in the world tricky 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 and I asked you that <laughs> for a reason okay I mean, it's my son for me, you know? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then who would be the second most important person? <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's a, a hard question to answer. I mean... Why? Why? Because, you know, if you say yourself, it kind of sounds a little selfish, you know? No, it's I not selfish, <laughs> but we don't want to get into it. But, but the very fact that you alluded to the idea that you might want to say yourself, I think yeah. it's very important that you consider yourself. Yeah, because, you, you know, know, when once you're happy, then your children yeah. are happy. So. You can do for everybody <laughs> else. But if you're yeah. miserable and you're not happy and you have all these trials exactly. and tribulations, you can't really be outgoing. This mm -hmm. is why I, you know, suggest, you know, who do you think is the most important person in the world? Obviously, your son. We right. understand that. But you definitely take care of yourself to the extent that, like, hey, without you, mm -hmm. There ain't none of that, you know, kind of a thing. So, I mean, I'm sure you exercise, obviously. You have yeah. a good diet. You know, you sleep well, mm -hmm. <laughs> things like that. Is there any particular political issues that really piss you off? Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I didn't buy lunch. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, no. Yet. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I really disagree with the school system in the States. I in mean, the States? Yes. Okay. Yes, Come on. Because we have free university in Switzerland. To an extent, you know, you can study whatever you want at any given time, and it's free. And uh -huh. it's good. It's not like bad schools or anything. And yeah. I really disagree that, you know, people with, like, less abilities like let's say less uh, financial abilities cannot go to university, you know. Uh -huh. I, I think that's horrible. You think education should be given to the people? Yes. Okay, we agree, go ahead. Yes, yeah, yeah. so yeah. I mean that's probably number one, uh -huh. I would say. Okay. Because that's where everything starts. I mean, that's like a person's start in life. I mean, how can you take that away from somebody? Did you ever have any ambitions to do other things? Well, when I was really little, I always wanted to become um, a famous movie actress. So that was well. Like I got Santa <laughs> Foy over here. I'm going to help you out with that one. <laughs> okay. So that was like my first thing. You want to be an actress? Mm, yeah, I was very little still, okay. probably like four, five, and then it kind of switched to dancer, uh -huh. and then I became more of a performing arts. Did you go to person. school for any 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 particular thing? For dance, yeah. For uh, beside dance. But no. Uh huh. I mean, I, I took acting classes, but yeah, sure. not like dancing. I mean, yeah. not like a professional degree. I can't <laughs> understand why Hollywood hasn't grabbed you up yet. I have this heavy accent. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't bother me at all, baby. Doesn't I'm gonna <laughs> tell you. <laughs> you you can say whatever you want to me, and okay. I'm just gonna go like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as you, as an individual, develop, can you see yourself possibly, after a certain period of time, not performing? Yeah, of course. 
that's yeah. a very healthy thing because a lot of people know if I didn't have my performance, I wouldn't have a life, no, you know, which no. is a terrible thing. But you can definitely see yourself moving into other things. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm doing already. That's what, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, designing, yeah. you know, doing projects, and okay. um, you know, next month I will do the choreography of a fashion show in Switzerland. Uh -huh. So uh, definitely, send I'll me tickets, will you, man? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll be over there with my little camera, <laughs> not my big camera. You know, go, yeah, yeah. So definitely, behind the scenes is fine as well, uh -huh. or something completely different. You know, that's why I'm like already starting to branch out. Yeah. Your knowledge, build your network, build that's your right. clients. You know, things take time. It took mm -hmm. me ten years to get into Cirque, <laughs> so you know. As you know, or you don't know, <laughs> but now you're going to know. What got me going in the world of literature is I did an interpretation of Miyamoto Musashi's Book of Five Rings. Are you familiar with that at all? No. That is like the definitive uh, manual on mortal combat. Mm -hmm. Okay, what every warrior strives to understand, what strives to learn. Okay, mm -hmm. and my version became celebrated worldwide for whatever reason. And I figured, you know, everybody said, well, that's really great. That's all for these guys. Mm -hmm. What have you got for women? I said, yo, you know what I got for women? <laughs> so I took the Book of Five Rings, and with a uh, friend of mine, I created a book called The Lady of the Rings, oh. which is Miyamoto Musashi's Book of Five Rings interpreted for women, and that's this one here. Okay, <gasps> I'm not going to pitch it over here. We don't have mm -hmm. to do that, okay? So I'm going to give you this. Uh, this will give you a good idea of the philosophy of the warrior, mm -hmm. which you are in certain respects based on what you do and what you've accomplished. Another book I've done, one of my novels, is also relatively celebrated. It's called The Hanshi of Central Park. Okay, I want you to read this, man. Okay. okay. And I want you to consider being the leading lady. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well. I'll sign these for you when thank we're done so anyway. Thank you so much. Okay? Thank you so much. My pleasure. <laughs> you are, no doubt, one of the most fascinating people I've spoken to in quite a while. Okay? Oh, thank and I'm going to say something here. And I want you to know, I'm a Hanshi. Okay, and what I say goes, okay? There's no doubt in my mind that you are what God had in mind when he created woman. Oh, <laughs> that is a compliment. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you okay? so much. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for watching Hanchi's World tonight. Okay, I've had with me, <laughs> had with me, one of the most exquisite women I've ever had the incredible pleasure of being in the presence of, Lara Jacobs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bingo. <laughs> you got it. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.